Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Jiu-Jitsu Times podcast. I am your host, Kevin Bradley, returning to a more familiar camera orientation for this episode, joined by my intrepid co-host, Kevin Gallagher, and back again for uh, a special guest appearance is the the queen bee of the Jiu-Jitsu Times, our boss, uh, Avery Clemens. Thank you very much for joining us from Down Under. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me on, guys. Ooh, yeah, well, it is always a pleasure. Use, impressive use of language there, Kevin. Intrepid. We only when the editor's on board do we drop uh, do we drop the big word. <laughs> It's, words, it's so. tough. My brain's firing off. I got to shake it up a little bit. The boss I'm not is gonna, here. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to Google that in context. Just I kind I kind of know what intrepid means, and I'm trying to figure out what it would mean in terms of of, of my persona. So I'm gonna well, before we get done tonight, I'll look. He's into just that. thinking. He's, he's Kevin making fun of me. He's Kevin right, making right, fun right. of me, <laughs> Yeah, intrepid to you too, buddy. <laughs> I am happy that we're getting the jokes out right now yeah, exactly. because Let's unfortunately uh, today's episode is probably going to be a little bit heavier. Uh, we have a, some serious topics to talk about and we thought Avery would have a, a really good perspective on the matter because we can be uh, – the two Kevins on this show can be a little bit more like blunt instruments when it comes down to it. So uh, as uh, news that shook the, the jiu-jitsu world, uh, Claudia Duvall, uh, real quick, I'll edit this out. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, Duvall. Uh, yeah. Duvall, Claudia right? Is it I've D- heard it spelled no. Duvall, and I'm like, I've heard it said Duv- Duvall. You know, like every knows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all I right. Think, I think it's like Duvall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Claudia Duvall uh, came out in uh, – a really uh, big interview recently, uh, sta- uh, alleging a lot of terrible things at her former coach uh, uh, Ricardo uh, De La Hiva. I almost said all my different. <laughs> uh, Ricardo De La Hiva, uh, an incredibly prolific jujitsu practitioner, and uh, it's it's really terrible stuff. Uh, we'll link to the full interview below so you can uh, look at it yourself, but. Uh, it's sexual in nature, so warning for anyone who uh, that's an issue for. But it's it's stuff that you know is is not uncommon to to hear about. And uh, you know, I know Kevin, you, you had a very strong reaction to it. Uh, I would, yeah, I I I personally, it's something that I hold particularly. So it's something that I find quite dis- disgusting in, in general. Is is when black belts abuse that that power that they have because when you're a black belt and you're any and, and when you're particularly when you're when you're any kind of person of authority you wield power and it's just like spider-man's uncle said your know, uncle 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 was an uncle al uncle ben uncle says ben. you know <laughs> yeah right the great with the great power comes great responsibilities and like when you have the opportunity to to mold the minds of your students you also sometimes get deified in that regard because they're you know because you happen to be something very you have to be very good at something that all of them are trying very hard to become talented at so it it it, it leaves you that power now you can use that power for good and use it to 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 influence your 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 students to 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 work for better things and use you as an example. You can also use it for evil, take advantage of things. Now I'm not saying I'm not above you know letting one of them buy me a beer, or take me out to dinner every once in a while, but you have to draw the line somewhere. And and guys that take advantage of that, it's just it's it's a scourge in our community that unfortunately we have to deal with constantly too much. Mm-hmm. So Avery, yeah. now that we have now that we do you have anything you want to add about that? First of all, any any, any of your reactions to that from the beginning? Um, I mean, the reaction I had to it was obviously really strong. Um, I don't really make a secret of it that I have, um, some pretty negative, similar experiences in my life. Um, and I think what really got me is, um, just her bravery. Like, I think, you know, at this point, these are all unproven allegations, um, and, none of us were there you know none of us can say what really happened but i i think it's undeniable to say that her pain was real like i don't know that you can look at that video and watch her reaction talking about what happened and say like no she's not she's those are crocodile tears you know like there's no question in my mind that that pain that she felt is real and it you know from someone who's been in jujitsu you know not quite as long as claudia but you know, I've been doing this 
seven, eight years, somewhere around there. And having seen that so many times and watching people act shocked is what really shocked me. Of course, it's shocking when it happens to, you know, such a prolific figure in jujitsu, you know, such a badass person in jujitsu, but it, this happens all the time. Um, and if you're not hearing about it, it's not because it's not happening. It's because, you know, someone's not telling you about it. Right. And I, when you look at some of the reactions and, the, oh, you know, those are fake tears, whatever, like you see why people don't come out about this. Because Claudia, like, she's no victim, you know, like she's tough. <laughs> like she's one of the best jujitsu athletes in the world. And for this to happen to her, you know, like I, I just, the reactions have not surprised me but just kind of disappointed me in some regards uh but just uh, real quick i just wanted to um ask you a little bit more on your uh, specific feelings to this just because not mm -hmm. only do you share a lot of uh uh, uh perceived uh, similar or like a shared experience I, i'm uh, similar mm -hmm. feelings towards this matter you were the one on the jiu-jitsu times to to break the story you wrote mm -hmm. uh the, the blog post for the website. Um, how did it feel? I'm, I'm going to bring it up just so people can yeah. know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is what, uh, this is the article that Avery wrote. Uh, we'll link to it in the, in the description down below, but uh, how did it feel writing this, you know, as, as a journalist? Uh, um, I, I think like, and I'm sure you guys can relate when you are, writing something like this there's the personal part of you and then there's the professional you know journalist part of you um and watching that interview I was you know it, it's upsetting um and I like Claudia as a person I've interviewed her before um you know I've chatted just on like Instagram DMs with her before and she like I adore her um and it's upsetting you know even though I haven't met her in person yet it's still upsetting when that happens to anybody especially someone that you're connected with in any way and um, it, it writing it up, it I, I think I just kind of go into like a different mode. Like this is a story that needs to be told regardless of, you know, what the outcome is, what the truth is. Like we obviously put up um, Ricardo De La Hiva's response as well um, the next day when he released it. So, you know, as, as my job requires me to tell all sides, to tell the story fairly, and I believe in that very strongly because if, you know, regardless of what side of the issue someone's on, they deserve to have their point of view told. Um, and so that to me is my priority. And I think that's what I was focused on is just getting the story out there because it's something that needs to be discussed either way. Um, but, you know, on a personal note, it's obviously upsetting. But to me, it's like writing about it and getting every side of the story out into the world is how. I would cope with something like that. So first of all, it's, it's important that people realize just because I, I know a lot of people are seeing this and they're seeing the headlines and then they're not really reading the articles and they're, and they're, and they're coming and they're, and they're, and they're trying to, to, to absorb the information based upon what they see, you know, in, in a, in a, in a two second clip and a, in a five second you know, face, face point out. Yeah. And on first perceived notion, eventually, obviously, you know, which is unfortunately the, the world we live in, everyone is saying, well, nothing's proven. You know, this guy, they're coming after Ricardo without any kind of mm -hmm. proof. And that, you know, it's just her word against his and everyone's calling him guilty in the court of law because, you know, up to this point, you know, daily Heave is the gold standard. One of the gold standards of, of, of what we consider to be a pillar of jujitsu. You know, he's a freaking, mm -hmm. he's a legend. He's a legendary figure yeah. as he's had a legendary career with children and all these other things. But I'll say this to all those naysayers and doubters that would believe that Claudio is, uh, is, is, is just fabricating this to kind of, you know, deflect attention away from why she, why she left daily Heave. Like that would really matter in the real world. Um, Watch the video. Watch the entire interview. Yeah. Because and and I I personally would tell you would tell people to watch the entire hour long segment of the video because it doesn't really get into the actual improprieties between her and uh, Dale Heaven until about forty five minutes in. But during the first hour or you know forty four first hour forty five minutes or so of the um, of the interview, you really get a, a, an insight into what it's like 
being a woman in today's world and particularly what it's like being a woman in uh, the jiu-jitsu community. So it starts to kind of make you better understand some of the reasons why Claudia might not have said anything about these things and might have kept them quiet throughout the course of time, which is so common in these situations. And it's, it's, uh, it's something that as a society – we still have not come to grips with. We still have not come to the point to where we can say, hey, you know, like people that are abused are traumatized. And mm-hmm. through that trauma, there's fear and doubt and self-hatred and, 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 and self-blame. And they don't want to ruin someone's reputation over something that they, they, they feel like isn't that big of a deal. You, you, you compartmentalize and you make things matter less. You know, mm-hmm. and, and to, to be honest with you, like I kind of mentioned this before, and I don't like to bring this up a lot, but I have personally been the victim of sexual abuse as, as a teenager for an extended period of time in a very similar situation that was what Claudia is going through. And it's, and it's a stifling, frightening feeling. So, you know, I don't necessarily understand what it's like being a woman, but I do understand what it's like being vulnerable and being manipulated by someone that is a mentor figure in a position of power. And um, that's what we deal with and what women and females deal with in general a lot in jiu-jitsu communities with professors. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, I think you bring up um, a really good point. And I think, you know, obviously there's the the gender difference between you and Claudia, but at the same time, you know, you are, you know, you're a big tough man. Like you are extremely accomplished in the sacred art of beating people up. (laughs) And um, I think, as much as, you know, women go through people doubting them and the self-blame and everything like that, um, you know, I, I don't want to presume what you've been through, but I assume that you may have gone through a lot of the same stuff, being someone that people wouldn't assume, you know, that you would be a victim of something like this. 100%. You know? And that's that's kind of the point that I'm trying to make here. And this is something that I yeah. can truly empathize with. You know, I I, I, yeah. I truly 100% can recognize this, which, which is why it infuriates me when I see the way the legal laws are written and I see the way that we automatically say, well, why did she wait so long? How come she never said anything? How come she never just left the room when, when she was being there? How come she never told the guy no? And like, people don't understand the power and the gravity that is given to a person in authority, particularly in a jujitsu environment. It's exemplified Mm -hmm. even more in that environment. I mean, if you watch the entirety of the video, first of all, Claudia was, she had a difficult childhood. She was picked on as a child. So she already has self-esteem issues from that, which is again, very common with women. I, this is something that I can't personally relate to from a female side because it's a different di- 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 dynamic for a man growing up. You know, there's the insecurities about having to be pretty or, or people going to like me. It's just all the things that a female has to deal with and those insecurities as they're growing, hormone changes and the whole thing that men have no idea about. So there's always there's that going on, which already leads to the idea of sometimes putting yourself in positions where you're being you know, in poor relations or making poor decisions against your best judgment. So coupling that with the fact that De La Hiva, you know, is this father figure to her. She, he actually is quoted as calling her his daughter. Mm-hmm. And then when she's in the midst of a breakup from a, from, a, from a troubled relationship, he comes over to the house, comes on her sexually in a position where she doesn't know what's going on. She's frozen in fear. And, and I could tell you from experience that I have can relate to that. And then when the deed is done, You tell yourself, oh, fuck, like that wasn't right. But Mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Am I going to be the one that goes out against fucking Daily Heva? Am I going to put my name in public to be smeared, to have people tell me I'm making it up? Well, and also tell me it isn't the truth. Not to, not to, just to, to sort of bookend that, you know, the, she's earned, she's earned such a, a, a legacy as a, a strong, uh, jujitsu practitioner that it tra- it almost tra- like she is almost successfully transcended being a woman. Just like that's how solid her game is. You know uh, this sort of thing. You know on some level she might have thought, oh, this is this might affect how people remember me. Well, of course, it's it's just whole, terrible. That's it's like a that's whole. It's a whole. I mean, then you start thinking about, God, am I going to be able to get my black belt? You, you follow the, the the train of thought. She was a brown belt at the time. You know, it sounds ridiculous, and it sounds very unrelated 
but it is. These are all factors mm-hmm. that lead to to uh, to keeping quiet, and even more so. This. So we, we we have a lot to talk about on this. We got a ton of things mm-hmm. to talk about on this. Believe me, we, we, we there's other things we can talk yeah, about. But was, I feel like um, this is going to be the whole freaking. Yeah, I, I also Avery. Uh, unless you wanted to add some, anything to that, just because mm-hmm. we might we have a lot of opinions on this. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot to sort through. You know, um, so, yeah, no, yeah, there, yeah, there's so many, and I think um, Kevin G brought up a really good point that there's layers to this. You know, I think people, when they hear these situations, they look at it at the top layer, which is, you know, a woman invited an older man into her house right. to, or not that she invited him and she allowed him in um, because he said he wanted to, you know, get a massage. Um, and that's the layer that people are looking at. Um, Kevin brought up a great point that women are socialized to be um more i don't want to say giving but more like people pleasing right as well and it's something that happens from birth you know we're told to be you know ladylike um subservient and, is maybe not the yeah. right word for it but in a, in a in a general manner it almost is it's the dichotomy yeah. it's almost the way genderification yeah. works is that yeah. even the right and word it, it happens that's like, the incorrect word but we get right. what you mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it and it's not that far off. Like even when, you know, you have great parents who are, you know, like my mom is a badass. Like she raised me to be stubborn and you know to talk back if something is wrong, and I still feel those, um, the those social um, pressures, the societal pressures. I guess I should say, right. um, you know, in everyday situations, like I feel myself go from, you know somebody who's not afraid to speak up to talk back and i i feel myself becoming more i guess submissive in a way right. um when in certain situations and i know you know i imagine cloudy has dealt with that as well especially if you have a childhood where you're getting picked on where you know you need to be like that if you want to have friends if you want your teachers to well, like you she was just want. broken up she I mean she was talking mm-hmm. to him about how she was just breaking up with her abusive ex-boyfriend yeah you know what i mean so he obviously that, that's what oh. predators do they pay attention to those things it's like a wounded gazelle and a wounded lamb yeah and you see it a lot too in these situations and people try to use that and i've seen it even in this situation where people try to use it to discredit the person making the accusations oh well you know she was clearly in a bad place already and you know, she probably wasn't thinking straight. And the truth is that predators use that to their advantage. This let's is... let's talk about that for a second. Go ahead, Kev. Sorry. Well, I, I just had one thing that, that, that yeah. was confusing to me that I was just wanting some clarification on. Yeah. And that was that uh, originally her decision to leave uh, De La Hiva, uh, the, the team, her original team, was uh, attributed to a change in – uniform policy that would have prevented her from wearing a sponsored gi and mm-hmm. i was just wondering if there was any more to that just because uh it seemed like a very strange thing to to have happen like there's an entire uh uniform change and then that interferes with sponsorships well mm-hmm. that was like, a I was chain wondering... reaction i think i think that was that was what she publicly announced as her, yeah I was, uh, that was what i was sort right. of in According to the interview, from what I gathered, I and mean, then Avery, you can back this up if you want to. From, mm-hmm. from what I gathered from the interview is that bef- prior to that, she had already, you know, the the the, the deed had been done. She had had an, you know, a, a sexual encounter with uh with with De La Hiva. and you know, throughout the course of however months following that, he was trying to pursue that, and she continually told him no, and she was continually trying. He was continually trying to make him her feel uncomfortable pushing her to the point of, of where he told her, no, you can't wear, even though, you know, she's a, she's an athlete that's trying to make a living as a jiu-jitsu athlete, which, you know, is very difficult to do. She had a gi sponsor. She had a gi uh, sponsorship. She wanted to wear the gi of her sponsored company that would allow her to put a Daily Hiva patch on. Daily Hiva said no, which, again, is very typical for, of, of, of jiu-jitsu schools. And Daily Hiva decided he was going to make her pay to train there. But I think the reality of it was is that because and this is just I don't know I'm, I'm speculating on this but I think this was the, the logical the, the line of reason that the Claudia was coming to that because he she was denying his advances he was beginning to become you know confrontational with her and eventually pushing her away through these you know uh, 
passive aggressive manners is what I got it gathered out of it. Yeah, I don't know what exactly happened. It seemed like there were a few there was the uniform change and she also said she wasn't again, this is just what she said publicly before this big interview came out, that she wasn't getting the support she needed. Um right. that she would compete and just not right. have anyone. He wasn't coming to coach her or and, and, and all the other things. And, only, and and you can look at that and you can and again, I'm drawing the conclusion here, but that's just what we do as important work supporters. You know, we I'm, I'm putting pieces together and making those 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 pieces, the puzzle kind of makes sense. And what I feel from it is that while he was continually trying to make advances, of her, I mean, he, she, she said in the interview that he was, you know, making yeah. off color jokes to her in the middle of class, you know, trying things that only they would know about and, you know, making her feel increasingly uncomfortable, which yeah, she, he had, oh, he had shit brought that fucking their, dudes do. Right. He had brought this to the public, you right. know, he yeah. had, and that was really tough to read, but, um, but so yeah, yeah, uh, you were, you were in the middle of saying something. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Avery. Um, no, I just imagine I've, I've been trying to put myself in, her shoes you know again all speculative um but i imagine if something like what she described had happened to me and i was able to justify it by saying well i can stay this is you know an elite team my house is right close to the gym um right. you know this is the best training i'm going to get and then these things start happening where suddenly it's not the best training i'm going to get I'm you spent the last able- five years of your life wanting to be a world champion and, and training under the one person yeah. then all of a sudden you're thinking oh god i can't do this am i going to ruin it all because i had a sexual encounter you know yeah or not not even that but just you know in terms of her trying to justify you know training there and i could be completely off base i don't claim to know you know what's going on through her head but just in her position, if I'm like, I'm staying at this gym where something terrible happened to me because I'm getting good support from that coach and I'm, my jujitsu is progressing, I'm able to, you know, wear my sponsor's stuff and suddenly all that stuff is taken, you know, it's like, well, now there's truly no justification right. to stay. Or maybe she just hit the point where she was like, no, nope, I can't live with what's happened to me and stay at this gym. I don't know. But that would be my best theory. So I want to I want to ask a few questions, and I want to kind of take mm-hmm. this off on a couple little branches off of this tree, yeah. and maybe we can get this to, to the bottom of things. Because, again, like this, unfortunately, this is not an isolated incident. You know, if, if this was something that just happened, you know, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. Unfortunately, this is is somewhat of a systemic issue that we have with the jiu-jitsu community that that is is you know needs mm-hmm. to be dealt with and need to be stopped. So let's talk a second about the actual act. So mm-hmm. I am personally of the opinion that, you know, to call it a rape, there's there may be some and, and again, I'm not I don't know the mm-hmm. legalities of this in, in one way, shape or at all. I mean, maybe there's lawyers that can, mm-hmm. that can help you out on that. But it seems to me that the the act was in theory and in terms I'm going to use quotation marks consensual. You know, it didn't seem like it was an act of rape. I mean, it seemed like someone that actually manipulated a situation. Um, you know, the, 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 the sexual encounter seemed consensual in nature. Obviously, it was manipulated by a position of authority, but it wasn't an actual rape per se in that manner unless we start changing our definitions of rape. But does that make the act any less egregious in your mind? And, be, and, 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 and I say that in terms of asking from, from a female point of view that, you know, Daily Heva, father figure, person of authority, looking out for someone that he's supposed to be, you know, his, his daughter, his student, you know, manipulates someone into a sexual experience. So, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's it. Go ahead. I, I, go okay. ahead. Comment on that. I'd like, to, I'd like to see your opinions yeah. on that. So, Claudia herself did not describe it as rape or sexual assault. Right. And she even said that she hesitated to call it abuse. And so, when I talk about what she described i'm going along with basically how she described it um because i'm not going to i don't want to like add trauma on top of what she's already experienced if she doesn't believe it was rape if she doesn't believe it was sexual assault i'm not gonna throw that onto the pile of what she's already dealing with you know um but i mean to me if you have a sexual encounter with someone and years down the road that's how they react to it that wasn't a good, that wasn't a, a positive experience, right? Consensual. No. 
No. Um, and there, consent is so much more than, like, to me, especially now when we all have the education to know what consent is and, you know, to, to know that we need to seek it out when we have a sexual partner. It's not excusable for someone to have a sexual encounter with somebody where that person is physically uncomfortable. She said, I was like a statue. I wasn't moving. Like, right. is that like, if you were having sex with someone and they were like a statue, they were petrified. Like, is that consent to you? Like, are you going to keep going with that? Or are you going to stop and be like, Oh wait, I'm so sorry. Are you not enjoying this? You know? And to me that, that makes it even more important. Like when there's no, verbal communication there that makes it that much more important when you have you know a a sexual moment with someone to say you know do you want this is this okay and like i've done that it's not it doesn't ruin the moment it's just like you know is this sorry like you like yeah yeah what is it there's a really good meme out there and i can't remember what it is it said something about like if if you bring a girl home or something like that and you ask her if this is something about what what in, in uh, like inappropriate sex or inappropriate sexual encounters or like if you bring a girl home and she says she wants coffee then you bring her to the house and she changes her mind you're not allowed to give her coffee or you're not allowed to, you know what i mean you're not allowed to feed yeah, her you're if, not if she, pour the right. coffee down yeah her. exactly if she, if she yeah. goes to sleep and she falls asleep you still don't give her the coffee you know if she wakes up yeah. the morning when she wants to leave you don't hold her there and make her drink the coffee you yeah. follow i'm talking about it's the same you know, it doesn't matter what she said 20 minutes ago i changed my mind i don't want coffee anymore exactly and that's, I think, a great metaphor. I've seen it as well. And I think it's a great metaphor um, for people to follow. And so to me, regardless of the specifics of what happened, it's regardless of the legality of it all, because I don't see this, um, you know, on Claudia's side going to the right. courts. I don't think I don't think she wants it to the judge. And judge. Yeah. Um, I think, I think she was he, caught in a difficult situation in an interview and it spilled out because it was something she had bottled up inside of her for, yeah. for, for all this time. Yeah, I don't know if, you know, it sounded like she'd spoken with um, Paola, the inter- the interviewer, um, previously about it. So I, I don't know if it was planned for her to talk about it or not. Right. But, um, yeah, I think regardless of, because this is not going to go to judge and jury, because this is probably forever going to be the court of public opinion, right. my opinion is that if you have a sexual encounter with someone and they are that disturbed by it, that years down the road they are, you know, crying, you know, and that emotional in an interview talking about it, you did something wrong. You know, you are not listening to obvious cues. Um, And again, if you're a man listening to this and going, oh, God, well, you know, we're all doomed then because like I haven't gotten, you know, a definitive yes, I want to have sex with you from every girl I've slept with. Like that makes it that much more important. And that benefits everybody involved. For you right. to just say, you know, do you want this? Are you into this? Do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to stop? Right. Like, you, you know, I, 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 say, I say to those guys, F you is what I say to that. But that's yeah. just my opinion. It's, so. it's just so easy. And again, this is something like, you know, I'm in a long term relationship now. But before, you know, if I hooked up with someone every single time and I'm on the, you know, the, the vulnerable end of this. But even, you know, with the guys, I would say, you know, is this OK? Do you want this? And like, you can make it sexy. You can make it you right. know, sensual. So it's not interrupting the moment, but like say that it, it benefits everybody involved. And then nobody has to worry about this stuff. You know, like nobody has to worry about, am I getting taken advantage of? And the other side doesn't have to worry about, am I taking advantage of this person? Cause there was let's, verbal consent. Let's talk a second you. about, um, daily Eva's response. Kev, you got anything to add to that? Well, I, I think I think mine's gonna involve uh, De La Hiva and the gym more, so you, you can go and okay. I'm just coming up. So mm-hmm. let's let's talk a little bit about uh, De La Hiva's response because mm-hmm. obviously it was a very legalese response. Obviously that wasn't something yeah. that that De La Hiva wrote down. He shipped it to his attorneys because you know, De La Hiva. Well, he's, not, he's got like, I think it, uh, look, it's it is dangerous to assume. Stuff. It's dangerous you know, to like, assume that assume. more but, information on but, these types right, of things is I, always gonna I, be coming. So, I just we won't say that his attorney wrote wrote it, but we will say it was definitely a uh, 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 what you, what was the word to a, a it legalese. Was, it, it was definitely a, it, it was a response a designed to right. Right. Uh, reach the public. That's, it was the that's, typical mm-hmm. response yeah. to any allegations along that line. Um, there's a few things that I find that that we come up that are interesting to talk about, and I and I. 
I feel like this is something we can continue down this road with. So De La Hiva particularly says, you know, first of all, talks about how he's, they were everyone shocked about these allegations. Claudia has been, you know, been her student, loving family, of the me- another member of the family for years, blah, 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 blah. Then he goes on to talk about how De La Hiva has accolades for the last 40 years, pillar of the community, blah, 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 blah. Then in particular at the end, it says my legal team is ready to put together blah, 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 to help clarify the situation. Mm -hmm. So there's no denial involved. He also mentions the fact that his wife and children are, you know, are behind him 100%. Mm -hmm. So what I believe, and again, this is conjecture, but just based on upon reading that, it seems to me that they're going to come back and say that, you know, Claudia De La Hiva had a consensual relationship, sexual relationship that his family is well aware of. And of course, she's going to toe the line and be the wife that, 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 that stands by his side so that they can go on to say that this was a consensual relationship. Now, what I want to start to show is, is that even though this was consensual, it's still so incredibly egregious for De La Hiva to take advantage of the situation in the manner that he did that it's, it's, it may not be illegal but it's almost, uh, you know, it's almost immoral. Yeah, and I don't think that it was consensual. I don't know. I don't know right. what the situation was. But if that is their argument, and again, that's a lot of speculation. And right. I'm not even going to speculate what they're going to say, what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, even I think then we're moving the conversation from Oh, the camera's backwards. Sorry, that's going to be That's all right. And we see this all the time with high-profile athletes, high-profile instructors, and women in particular who, you know, have a, an immense amount of respect for their coaches. Um, right. And I think a lot of coaches do take advantage of that. Um, and, again, that's not – an appropriate thing for a coach to take advantage of because like you see when you go into a gym and there is a black belt coach who is probably in really good shape probably good looking and you are you know a woman who's a white belt maybe maybe a blue belt maybe a purple belt maybe brown, like I don't know but you go in and you see this person you hold them in such high esteem and they're attractive and you start coming on to them it's the coach's job at that point to to shut that down 100 percent. be like yeah and like say no i'm in a position of power like this is not an equal power dynamic like i am you know for all intents and purposes i am a teacher and you're a student and while it's legal for us to sleep together it's not ethical you know and and the coaches need to be the one to say that you know because the 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 less experienced woman in there doesn't under may not understand that power dynamic that's actually that actually dovetails a little bit into what i wanted to talk about and that's that uh, and this is in no way taking any attention away from, you know, the potential victims here, but uh, just from from a perspective that I think a lot of people feel doesn't doesn't get a lot of direction in what to do in these situations are mm-hmm. are the people that when something like this happens in a gym with the the head of that gym, the other people that train there, you know, like the, there are these people that very likely the majority of them are are just showing up to train get better maybe they've seen claudia maybe they they know her maybe they just maybe they have no interaction with her mm-hmm. what do you do you have any idea what uh their response might be to this you know just cuz i've i've been very blessed in that uh everywhere i've trained has been relatively controversy free you know like i've mm-hmm. never had to look at the the heads of my my schools differently you know Mm -hmm. unless i found out that they liked the sports team i didn't you know like that yeah that's the most i've had to deal with you know like so what what's what's it like in in that mindset um i've kind of been in a similar situation before you don't have to Um, give any details yeah no but like in terms of like coach versus student and i was not the coach or the student you know like i was on the outside of it um but i think when we look at these situations from a third person perspective, everybody in the gym, like, think about how you think of your coaches, you know, you probably think they're the bees knees and, you know, hopefully you're training there because you respect them as a person, not just because their jujitsu is good. Right. 
And that's what I'm sure a lot of people have thought. And, you know, the Claudia slash De La Hiva case and, you know, countless other situations as well. And it, it's a hard place to be in, I'm sure. And I know when you have your friend or somebody that you love um, who's clearly dealing with this emotional trauma and the person that they're accusing is someone that you think really highly of. And it, it's, it's a tough place to be in. I, I think you have to make, you know, a judgment call there and say, all right, is, do I believe the, you know, the alleged victim enough to say, okay, I'm going to leave this gym. I'm going to, you know, sp speak out against the coach. Um, and again, that's, that's a really difficult place to be in. And I, I don't blame other students of the school for saying, I'm going to wait and see what else comes out. Um, but at the same time, I've thought, you know, when I hear cases like this, I'm like, okay, if somebody was saying this stuff about, you know, my brother or my partner, who, you know, I, I believe are both wonderful, wonderful men who I don't believe are capable of something like that. If somebody went on video like Claudia did and spoke about allegations like that against one of my loved ones who I don't believe is capable of something like that, would I believe her or would I believe, you know, my brother? Or Especially my if your brother's denying it vehemently. Yeah, yeah. Right. And to me, when I look at that and shifting just back to the Claudia situation, if I saw somebody reacting in that way to an encounter they had with my brother or my boyfriend a few years ago and their reaction was that strong i don't know if i would immediately jump to oh yeah my brother or my boyfriend definitely raped this person or you know had a non-consensual encounter with this person but i would believe that it was so traumatic that that person that you know the victim's reaction was genuine and i think that's worth looking into at the very least i don't think it's wise to blindly support either person I'm very curious to see how this plays out simply because I'm curious to see a lot of the, the future of, I think gym owners and gym owners reactions and gym owners like appropriate behavior could hinge on daily. He response to this, to be perfectly honest with you. So I, I am of the opinion that daily he could still come out of this as the 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 pillar of the community that he always has been and use this as an opportunity to really show that what he did was wrong and that the rest of the, the jiu-jitsu community should fall in line because he has enough respect with the community to be able to to garner that um and i feel like all he has to do is apologize i feel like all he has to do is say hey look this was a horrible, horrible thing. And I am so sorry that I did this to you, Claudia, and I made a mistake and it doesn't make it right. But I want the world to know that what I did was wrong. Uh, you know, legalities aside, I should not have taken advantage of a situation where I am a person of power to uh, to one of my students. Um, you know, again, he's always going to be marred. And that's the problem. Is he going to have the prize? Is he going to have the wherewithal? Does he really have? Is he really the great person that he that that we all want him to be, to be able to come out and do that? See, I think it is very wishful thinking yeah. that he is going to come out of this unscathed or any. Uh, let me rewind. <laughs> I think it's wishful thinking to assume he's going to come out of this with any sort of um, mar to his reputation because we've seen this happen before right. many times and every single time, you know, no matter who speaks out, no matter it, even if the guy admits it, which has happened recently, this has been a whole thing going on in the background um, of the jujitsu world um, where somebody admits that they did something and there's still people who will let them into their gym and train with them. You know, yeah. and, uh, you know, maybe a couple years pass and then it's like nothing happens. It's happened, like nothing it just goes away. It's just, yeah, just it another day. Like it, yeah. it is such wishful thinking yeah. to and, and that's not a fault on you for believing it, because I would love to believe it, too. But I see it so many times. And even in my DMs, you know, the, the, I have women messaging me every single week saying right. I went to the courts about this. You know, my instructor assaulted me. I went to the courts to it and you know, he got off on a plea deal, but like the world knows that he did it, you know? Right. 
and nothing happens. They're allowed to keep teaching. No, they, you know, teaching. They, they still have big name athletes that don't say a word. Like Claudia has, you know, incredible courage to come out about this because you see people in the jiu-jitsu community who have reputations like that have gone back years about their behavior and none of these big strong muscly dudes will say anything about they'll continue to train with that person you know they'll support that person they'll pose for pictures with that person and that's I think that's the key element right there is the fact that they still train with him because you can you can go online you can even say oh what a horrible thing but if you go behind doors and you still want the information if you mm-hmm. if you can disregard it long enough to go train with it just because you want your jujitsu to get better you're doing the wrong thing yeah and people do like I I really I hate to admit it because again I want I want the right thing to come out of this re- like regardless of what happened you know, regardless of what the truth is, I just want the right thing to come out of it, whatever that right thing may be. And I don't have faith that it will. Right. And that breaks my heart because I want me to Avery I want because Claudia's heart to be you know, settled. And in in so even from from a from a position of 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 you know taking not necessarily taking David Daily Heave aside, but wanting him to be the great person that he has mm-hmm. been and he he's the person that he's tried to present himself to be over the last 40 years, mm-hmm. this would be a real opportunity for him to show that, to say, hey. This is horrible. I am, I, you know, you, you, you follow, you follow, we, we went through it already, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, I don't think that that's, I don't think that's going to happen either. I see this playing out as like, well, you know, and the sad part is, is that there will still be people in the community that will say, well, fucking, what the fuck do you expect? She invited him over to, to get a massage. Mm-hmm. You know, what, 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 did, she, what did she think was going to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what yeah. was she anticipating? You know, she, she had a crush on De La Hiva. You know, it's like, you know, and, and, and all of these things. Like, I, I just, it's, it's a sad state of affairs that we live in in general that we still live in a society where that's socially acceptable. And it makes me sad. Yeah, I agree. Kevin B, did you have anything you want to it's, say? It's it's heavy. I, you know, I've I I I don't feel comfortable sharing stories that aren't mine, you know, but I, yeah. I do I have uh known people in that position and it does seem like the law is uh it can be rough. It it can mm-hmm. be very rough. I I'm I also know whatever this is, it's it's the start of it. It's the the mm-hmm. beginning of it. This could be the beginning of a lot of other people coming forward. It could be the beginning right. of, uh, like Kev G said, a lot of changes that might need to be made, you know, Renaissance. And it could be just the beginning of this case in particular. We're still going to be learning about because uh, Ricardo's definitely not going to uh, stop. He's, he's definitely going mm-hmm. to continue to try and uh, save his image uh, through whatever means are available to him. We're going to find out more information, you know, and I, mm-hmm. uh, there's going to be a lot of arguing no matter what it's, mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of arguing and a lot of really strong opinions. And it's just, uh, it's going to be tough to wade into. Cause you know, there's, there's a, uh, it's terrible. It's terrible just cause a lot for a lot of people, this sport is a refuge from, uh, that sort of concern, you know, you get to feel empowered, you get to, to learn how to be strong. You know, probably all of us got beat up at some point or another, you know, I got <laughs> mm-hmm. some, some crazy guy in high school tried to shove me in my trunk, uh, or oh sorry, in the God. trunk of his car. <laughs> yeah. And then, my, and then my cross country coach happened to be a, a brown belt. So he choked him unconscious. And that's then nice. I, that's how I ended I up being you okay. telling me this. Yeah. Like it's this this yeah, is a, this thing awful. is supposed to it's it's the closest you get to being a Jedi as my my coach Ed says you know it's, <laughs> it's, it's the little. force you it gives you the force it get your training surrounds yeah, you right. and, and binds you to something yeah, bigger yeah, than yourself. Oh, uh, you got you got to yeah, show it off. What the hell is it? There it is. <laughs> when you have too many tattoos ah. and you forget. Oh hell yeah! Jedi, <laughs> fuck the Jedi. I can't. The, That's anyway, so it's cool. a Jedi order. It's a Jedi order tattoo. I can't figure out how to hell position yeah, my damn arm. But for real, yeah. We'll we'll, the, we'll we'll link to Kevin's Instagram. Yeah, right. we'll, we'll show the. Let me, let me no, ask, no, no, no. But just to, ahead, just Kevin. to finish. Yeah. I. Yeah. I've seen. I I I was trained. You know very well. I, I learned from some really good journalists. Uh, uh, getting my degree, and I feel. Uh, 
the I feel bad to say that it, we, you need to wait and see what where this goes. You know, yeah. you need to. That does not mean you can't have empathy. That doesn't mean that we can't be human while being journalists and being responsible mm -hmm. uh, news distributors. Uh, when we say that we we stand with victims of sexual assault, but that this is the beginning of a very complex and, and twisty situation. And yeah. I, it's terrible. You know, you can't hear these things and not have your heart break, you know, to on a human level. It's not, it's not like that bullshit where, Oh, think of it. If it's your sister, you, you don't need to have a sibling. You need to have a basic ability to yeah. connect with the word about your sister. Think what. about the, what this human being is going through. I don't know about what yeah. your sister. Yeah. I, my sister's crazy. She'll just bite your ear off for no reason. Hi, Maddie. I love you. <laughs> she won't. I'm just being mean. I'm the Avery, older brother. Let me <laughs> ask, let me ask one more question. I kind of want to play yeah. devil's Can advocate. We pause here. Just for one yeah. Yeah. For sure. For yeah, sure. Ab absolutely not. Absolutely not. All right. Editing. All right. <laughs> and this is where I will go in and Sorry. edit this transition seamlessly, seamlessly using the power of basic video editing software <laughs> that comes on every MacBook known as iMovie. You find this fucking thing. You got. You got to find that tattoo, man. It's right, I, I, I'm just pissed that like I, I I could find it. I have it in my arm. I'm just I'm, I can't figure out how to position my damn arm. Well, now I need to get you. We, now, now we need to get you on my Star Wars podcast. I'll so send. I'll take talk. a picture of it and send it to you. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not as big and I'm not a nerd enough to. I guess I could hang, but I don't know enough about Star Wars to really nerd out. Well, this Star the Wars show podcast. is also run by uh, a black belt and a purple belt, so yeah, like we can just we can shoot dude, the shit on that. Kev, I have absolutely nothing going on. <laughs> so I if, mean, you, if you hit me up and said, "Hey, you want to be on a Star Wars podcast?" Fuck oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. My coach Ed. Hello, everybody. Welcome okay. back. Hello, everybody. Welcome yes. back. All right. All right. Let's get just, get sit him and sit him away. The oldest of old people trying to figure this out. That's all right. Yeah. Don't worry. 80, you should, you should see seven, me. Eighty. You're turning yeah. seventy, right? You should see me punching my keyboard, trying to punch into this thing right. sometimes. <laughs> so I got. I have Anybody? one, 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 one more yeah. question for you in, in this regard. I think we can move on to something else. Um, what? So what do you say? We'll play a little devil's advocate here. What do you say to to gym students and gym owners that will say that, well, you know, there's plenty of girls out there that are just loose, that, that, that come to the gym, that want to hook up with all the fighters? Because, you know, let's be honest. Let's live in a real world that we live in. There are situations where instances happen like that. Then they'll just say, well, you know what, man? Like, if I got some girl – that really wants to hook up with me, that's really got a thing for me, like, why shouldn't I hook up with her? Why shouldn't I, you know, I'm not taking advantage of the situation because she just, she wants to have it. So, and then they can use that regard to justify the actions between Daily Heath and Claudia. What, what do you say to situation? First of all, what do you say to the girls in that situation? And what do you say to, uh, to, to, to the coaches? We'll keep it in that, that plane. Um, it, it's hard because like every situation is unique. And while on the surface, I can be like, you know, oh, you should never you know, kind of don't shit where you eat sort of thing. Um, I, I know people who have, who have dated their coaches or their students and now they're in, you know, they have kids and they have this incredible marriage and blah, right. blah, blah. But I think, again, this is where the concept of enthusiastic consent comes in, where a, a, an absence of a no is not an enthusiastic yes. Um, and so if you're, again, like if you're a coach and you're, going after you know every white belt and blue belt in your gym like mm, that's probably not good if you're you know if you're a black belt and she's a brown belt um i guess maybe a purple belt like it, it, it every situation is so unique um but i think both people in the situation need to look at this and say okay how much of this is influenced by the power dynamic am i pursuing this person because I like them as a person or, you know, am I just trying to hook up with them because I find them attractive? Um, and, I, and I think that a lot of times when you're talking about relationships, I interrupt you. I'm, I'm horrible about that. That I interrupt you yeah. when you keep talking. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I feel like also when you're dealing with situations like that, and this is just something that like, as you get a little bit older in age, like I'm 43 or, you know, you've been around the block a little bit longer. You start to kind of realize things like that. It's like, there is inevitable. There is always an inevitability 
in any kind of relationship, and it doesn't always happen like this. Again, it's always case usually it's always case sensitive, but there's generally a situation when casual sex always becomes something more if it continues to go on, and like when that something more starts to happen is when you start to get emotional responses that, you know, just for gym owners out there to think about these things, like emotional responses means you lose students. It means you, your student now decides she doesn't want to train with you anymore because she doesn't like the uncomfortable situation of you being in the gym or vice versa. You as an instructor become emotionally attached to a, previously fun fun sexual experience and now you're angry at a student and you make yourself you make that student feel uncomfortable to the point to where you've lost money so in the grand scheme of things because i've gotten in trouble with this before i don't want to talk I, i've gotten in trouble for this before I, I i i hooked up with one of my students at my gym it was a bad thing and i got in trouble about it it was we had we had a pretty good relationship for a long time it was a long a long-term thing but the general idea of it is is that it's something that shouldn't have happened because no matter how hard you want to try to make it not become a thing sometimes it does and when that thing becomes unmanageable now you now bottom line as a gym instructor you're losing money you're losing profits and maybe those profits turn into, oh, man, did you hear Coach Kevin hooked up with so-and-so? What an asshole. Let's go train down the street because he's a dick. You follow? At the, I do, but at the same time in that situation, um, and I'm not saying your situation specifically, although it does apply, you are kind of in the person that, and, and you know this, like I'm not, right. I'm not pretending like you don't know, um, but you knew that you were in a position of power. And so I'm not super sympathetic to the whole, you know, oh, well, gym owner, you lose money because of this. I'm more concerned about the person who went to the gym looking for a good training experience. And again, I'm not just referring to what you right, right, spoke right. about. I'm saying like in general, um, because this happens all the time. You know, you're not the first person to do something like right. that. Right. Well, no, but I'm more, but, I'm more what... concerned. Mm -hmm. let, let what I'm finish. what I'm trying to say is that the sorry, if you're gonna finish finish your topic. I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah. Cutting you off. <laughs> no, just that um I, I'm more concerned about the person who went to the gym looking for a certain experience and you know came out of that with a, a negative um perception of you know coaches and jujitsu of jujitsu as a whole. Um that person might be scared to go to a different academy. That person might suffer you know their mental health could suffer their physical health could suffer like there's so much more and i think it's you know when gym owners look at it from that perspective if they don't have that type of empathy to think i shouldn't hook up with a student because of how it would affect them and if they're thinking i shouldn't hook up with a student because of how it would affect my bottom line or you know my financial situation my family situation like you're looking at it the wrong way if you, you know, right if i'm not like i'm that, not justifying i'm not the the the, the yeah, latter I'm, I'm either i'm just trying to to get to some of these meat-headed professors out there that are just so stuck yeah. in, in the old ways of saying well what's wrong why would this happen i'm just trying to make them see things okay if you yeah. can't see the reality of the damage you're doing in a situation again like this isn't something i'm proud about i was just bringing it up to be in context i'd feel like a hypocrite if i didn't yeah, at least yeah. mention the fact that that happened to me before in a similar situation um i feel yeah. like if you can't think of it from an empathetic point of view at least think of it from a, a business point of view. And if the, and to, just to help to, to root this shit out. Yeah. Is, 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 was the only, the only I actually had a question yeah. for, for both of you guys as, as uh, the, yeah. the lowest man on the totem pole right now. I have sort of a, uh, I don't know if I could have a complete view of this, but with belt rank specifically, you know, in a lot of workplace mm -hmm. uh, scenarios and like business scenarios, there's like this sort of, soft power dynamic where like different people can have different positions of authority but in jujitsu it's very you know it's very top to bottom like the belt color often just represents that's the end all be all like the the gym owner is gonna is gonna be the black belt you know the often the mm -hmm. best guy there unless there's like a competition team and they got one like they got killers uh how much how, like, do you think belt rank is just an easy, quick guide to like power dynamics in in that space, or is is there? Do you think it's more nuanced than that? Do you want to go first, Kevin G? I was gonna no, let you go. go. Ahead. That's on you. Okay. <laughs> um, 
I, I don't think it's an end all be all, um, but I think it's a pretty easy way of looking at things. And I, I hear a lot of people go like, oh, well, like it's silly to base power dynamics off belt color, but like we're actually pretty lucky in that we have a pretty clear power system um, in terms of the rank system. Um, and it is more, it is more nuanced than just like, oh, well, he's a white belt and you know, you're a blue belt and you know, it's like Romeo and Juliet. Like, it's not like that. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, we also look, at, we can also look at this, like, okay, the, the higher your belt rank, the more physically dangerous you are in theory. Um, and the greater that disparity is the, the greater of a power dynamic disparity shout out to the time Cheers. avery kicked my ass the first time like no. we hung out. <laughs> i i no. also i agree with you in that regard but i also no. believe that the the level of consensus people are gonna have sex there's nothing you can do about that like I, i'd like to believe yeah, we live in yeah, a perfect world where we can we can we can eliminate you know carnal desires and in particularly in such an intimate setting is what we deal with in jiu-jitsu but there's nothing you do about that's gonna happen you know I, i'd like to say it's not gonna yeah. happen yeah of course but i think the real point of issue is is like students hooking up is one thing. Like if a if a white belt hooks up with a brown belt because she's you know she's flattered with the fact that he's a brown belt, or even a black belt, he's flattered with the fact that he's a he's a black belt because you know mm -hmm. she he is an expert or has a mastery of something that she is you know completely enamored with. And there's a sexual attraction that just builds from that. Some man sometimes, you know what I mean. I think as a woman, you can you can you, yeah. can, you can also agree with that. You know, from 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 a male point of view, yeah. just attraction happens that way you know i think that the the key element here is being in a position of mentorship which makes it egregious mm -hmm. when you have that when you are a coach when you are someone that this student comes to a building to learn jujitsu from to actually say i am here i need you to teach me jujitsu because again I don't think of jujitsu. I I have a much larger appreciation for what jujitsu is, and I believe you guys too do too. It's more than just learning how to do jujitsu for me. It's more than just coming to a yeah. gym and fucking you know learning how to kick somebody's ass. It's it's the 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 struggle and the 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 internal conflicts and the internal struggles that you come through and overcome and 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 building character while you're going up the belt ranks that really is the secret gem inside of what makes jiu jitsu great and as an instructor to not realize how important that is and to manipulate someone that is looking for those answers is it's it's such a bad, bad thing. It's such a such a sad thing to see happen. Coaches should know better. Yeah. Black belts should know I, better. I think you. Yeah, I, you bring up a good point too. Um, I mean, ultimately, consensual adults can do what they want, um, and it, again, like when we talk about um, Kevin B. How you brought up how there were a bunch of. Um, more nuanced little details that you have to take into consideration as well. I think Kevin G brought up a great point that it is, it, it's based on the, the mentorship and how someone views you and how you view that person. Um, Kevin, did you, have, Kevin B, did you have something? To add? No, well, I, I, I would only, yeah, I think he, he, uh, Kev, you basically covered it. Um, pretty succinctly. I think I would just only add that, that, uh, I think it's it's a little worse just because if you're in an occupation, you know, for a lot of people, an occupation isn't a choice. You're doing that to to punch a clock, make a paycheck, and an abuse in that setting in which you're already kind of trapped is it, it is. I think easier to disassociate from it, potentially I could be completely off base, but with jujitsu, that is a recreational activity for a lot of people. You know, it, I, it's not like, like with, Cla with someone like Claudia, it's their full livelihood. So I, I suppose it would be different, but if, if you're just a student, a casual uh, practitioner and uh, your recreational activity is invaded by something like this, I can imagine that, that's going to potentially kill your love of the 
the practice itself, mm-hmm. you know, the, this ecosystem that you've built up with these people and you've gained trust with them and uh, you're all working hard together. That's completely damaged, you know, and uh, it's just awful. I, I gotta, I gotta say these things because it's, it's, uh, it's awful it really to it's just awful. think it's about. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. I, I would, I would just say this in one last passing thing that I want to talk about you. If you got some time, I want to talk about something else really before you go. <laughs> another, another good topic that you'd be in or that you, you would have firsthand information on. So um, <laughs> if you got time, you got time, talk a little bit. You got nothing going on, Avery? You want to get going? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, have you good on time? Cool. So the, the, the one last little piece of information that I would give to, uh, to to young jujitsu practitioners out there is first of all like we have to get to a point to where you know i know it's a difficult thing to say and it's a difficult thing to envision but we have to get to a point to where black belts don't allow themselves to be deified in the manner that they that they do because what happens is is as you allow these students to deify you you can start to become a cult like figure a cult leader type figure and then you believe like you're infallible can do whatever the hell you want because the rules no longer apply to you so like as black belts and as head instructors we need to start to learn to try to push those desires aside like i said before like i will ingest use that to my advantage because there are ways to use that to manipulate to get the most out of your students to make your students really grow and you can have fun with it and enjoy yourself and i'm not gonna lie like i will take some hockey tickets or i'll take a free dinner or you know i'm talking about i'll let somebody buy me a beer (laughs) because of it because i feel like yeah you know i'm manipulating with the force to evil but i'm having a little bit of fun with it and they like me anyway they get to hang out with coach kevin you know but at the end of the day we can't allow those feelings of uh, of grand and grandation, I guess I don't think that's a word, but you get the general idea. To 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 in grandizement to overcome us to uh, to pursue those things. And secondly, mm-hmm. you know, if you're a female at a gym or if you're a fucking male at a gym and you're at a gym where your 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 black belt instructor is doing those things, get the fuck out, man. Just leave. Fuck them. There's a ton of different schools for you to go train at. There's a million jiu-jitsu academies on the planet. And you know what? If that guy's a world champion and he's putting out other world champions and they're continuing to live that culture, fuck them twice. Go somewhere else. Go down the street to any other jiu-jitsu instructor that's available to teach you and go take your jiu-jitsu for them because jiu-jitsu is about much more than being a jiu-jitsu practitioner and being proficient at jiu-jitsu. It's about having character. And if your instructor doesn't have character, he's not the right instructor for you. So that's that's all. I that's the yeah. last thing I have to say. And I'm, yeah. I'm I'm passionate about this because, like I said before, I have experienced this on a firsthand basis that I'm just now starting in my life to deal with. I mean, I put that shit away in the back of my brain for fucking years, mm-hmm. and I'm just now getting to the point to where I feel comfortable enough talking about it. So I know the damage, the real, true emotional damage that comes from this. Even though people and victims try to push it away, pretend like it's not happening. Like the the, the you can't suppress tra- trauma that far down for that long. It figures out ways to pop back up to the surface. Mm-hmm. And thank you for sharing your experience. Yeah, well. I, know. I don't. I, I don't want to be about me. I, I think it's a women's issue. Yeah, it's it's. No, I, I, like, I, it, I, it's I, about. It's about everyone. Yeah, you know, it really is. Because even even me, big bad coach Kevin. Yeah, it's it's something that I that I yeah. deal with, and you know I'm a victim of that too. So, every, I, I feel you know whatever. I don't I don't I, I hate doing this because I, I get kind of arrogant sometimes. You know I, I enjoy the spotlight, but I'm trying not to make it about me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's about every it's about it everyone. Though. Yeah, let's it's a, it's let's a conversation uh, that needs to be had. Let's lighten the load here a little bit. You still got time? You guys you got time? You want to talk a little bit? Yeah, I, I got something. I got something I want to talk about because I got you. All right. Now, how many – in during quarantine, how many imaginary friends have you guys made up? Because I'm up to five, <laughs> and it's pretty crazy. It's a pretty crazy cast of characters. I have uh, a roommate. We got who Simon, to be my, right, Garfunkel, yeah. <laughs> Oates, uh, Cheezers, and Gus. They're and Gus? crazy. Cheezers they're and Gus. Cheezers yeah, Gus. They Gus were the last. The two. They're, the, they're the nutty ones. Gus is sort of chill, actually. He's pretty. He's pretty mellow. All things considered. No, but for real, how are we doing with the quarantine? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing okay. I'm. I'm not losing my mind quite yet. I've, like I said, I had a. I had a concussion issue. I've got concussion problems that pop up on me every once in a while, and I was dealing with mm-hmm. that 
right when all this shit happened and like it made everything it just makes everything so much harder to deal with you know my paranoia was fucking through the roof i put i made myself stay away from facebook because i was turning into like an antifa like a torch oh wheel you know, I, I don't want to do that because there are parts obviously i'm a very liberal-minded person and there are parts of me that, that dislike the course of the direction of the country we're going in but i don't i don't like to get involved in that discussion because it doesn't really do any good it just causes more 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 issues but but anyway, the, the, I'm, I'm dealing with it better now. I'm feeling better. My head's clearing up again. I'm, I'm starting to come back to being the old happy-go-lucky Coach Kev. Hell yeah. Avery, how you doing? Um, I've been doing okay. I'm lucky enough that you know I live with my partner, so I can talk to him every day. Um, and I have a friend who recently moved and needed someone to watch your cat. And so even though that is no. technically not allowed in my apartment, um, okay. no one's coming by here anyway to check. Do they make you pay a – do, do, does your apartment have like a pet fee or something? We we just aren't allowed pets, period. Um, it's not even the landlord. It's like the association that we're renting through. Um, so, yeah, they don't allow pets. But um, – yeah, she was kind of in an emergency situation and um, not sending the cat out onto the street. Um, and so we've taken her in for the time being. So it's not terribly lonely here. I mean, um, I'm staunchly anti-cat, but I can see that this is a very compassionate well, action on your fault. Oh, your part. Your part. I think we got to let you go. Sorry. No, no. Uh, it, what I mean is I love cats. I've seen it on Broadway 147 <laughs> times. I've rescued 17 <laughs> Bengal tigers in my lifetime. Please don't I, fire me. I have Please two don't. tiny chihuahuas and I have a cat. My cat was my firstborn. I've had my cat for a long time. And as much as I love my dogs, I don't believe I'll ever have another dog again. I think the next pet I have will be a cat because cats, <laughs> cats are just so easy. Like, and I'm not by any means someone that needs to have anything that relies upon me to survive. I just don't have that in me. <laughs> like, I, I may one day have a child, but at this point, I think, I think dude, that's, that's dude, fast. Dude, dude right. all my pets do double as right. secondary food sources right. should I right. get, dude. Like, so I can, whatever. <laughs> I can barely care for myself. And a cat takes care of itself. A cat literally does better yeah. than takes care of itself. It actually reminds you to take care of it. It'll be like, hey, stupid, I'm hungry. You have to feed me. Okay, leave me alone. All right, mm-hmm. I'm going to go outside. Now you can pet me for three minutes. Now I'm done with you. Leave me alone. <laughs> so yes. cats cats are very And that's me. That's my whole personality. Yes, exactly 100%. <laughs> so I, I do want to talk I do want to talk a little jiu-jitsu because I got yeah. some, I got a good thing I wanted to bring up to you about because I know that you you have some first-hand knowledge of this. Um let's talk Keenan Cornelius uh Gordon Ryan. Let's talk a little bit about that freaking madness because this is something <laughs> this week we can have some fun with this. No, the Keenan thing is weird just because uh he's they're, they're two very prolific guys. And there's obviously, I think some, uh, I think it's possible that Gordon is over. I like this sounds like fence sitting. It sounds, uh, to be fair, that to be video, fair. to be fair, edited or otherwise, to be fair. To be fair. Oh my God. I need Avery, to watch you Letter Kenny. Come on, Avery. You're supposed to jump in on that, but I love you, baby. You're fine. We'll yeah, go. no, you're, you, uh, <laughs> you, you yeah. missed the, uh, you I missed the, uh, the Letter Kenny, uh, to be fair, to be fair. I'm sorry. It's like so. One says to be fair, to be fair, and that's to be fair. Good. We love but, it. So, so Gordon, as as traditionally very like angry and torch burning as he can be, it sounds like in the video he had some very legitimate possible grievances oh. with with Keenan. Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely came out thinking that uh, Keenan might have done something. And this is a guy like I I really admire Keenan. You know, I'm a huge fan of his. I've had friends of mine that have trained at, at Legion have nothing but good things to say about uh, the guys. One of the, well, the guys there, Scotty karate is, is a, is a, Scotty he karate. used to, yeah, he used to train uh, at soul craft and uh, with uh, the Gracie's up in uh, Connecticut, you know, and my, my coach knows him, you know, he's a good guy, but um, yeah, so- it's, it's weird. I have I have a few opinions on Keenan Cornelius based upon that. And, and first of all, I will say that yeah, I believe that that the gripes and the concerns that, that Gordon Ryan have against Keenan Cornelius are quite legitimate. But I also believe them to a certain point. And I'll and I'll, and I'll kind of get into that first if, in a minute. First of all, I want what I want to say is that I do believe that Keenan Cornelius definitely has some flaws. And I have always had been of the opinion that like. 
as cool a guy as Keenan Cornelius is, there's also a certain part of him that is probably extremely difficult. And I use it in this context. It's only a matter of time because I've seen a lot of guys. I've been I've been around this shit for a long time. And I see when you see a student, no matter how talented they are, jump from one gym to the next gym to the next gym as much as Keenan Cornelius has, you have to start to think to yourself. And then every time he's always like, well, this guy did this or this gym was that, this gym was that. You have to start to think to yourself, okay, well, are you looking internally and thinking that maybe you are the problem? Now, we talked about this on, my, on a podcast I did earlier today about that exact situation. He left, he left Lord Irvings. We'll give him that. But he did leave a Hawaii. He, and, and then when he left San Diego – uh, with Atos, you you gotta stop to think for a second. You know, you know he's this laid back kind of like uh, you know surfer dude kind of dude, and maybe he wasn't a very good fit there. But eventually, when do you start to say, well, geez, Keenan, like wh- what's what's the real issue here? Why are you really leaving all these gyms? Is it because you you know are being wrong, or is it because you just can't play ball with with someone else's uh, with someone else's rules? You know, you're not into that particular thing and that's that's a character flaw as far as i'm concerned yeah i don't know obviously the full story of what happened um but i think regardless of what happened this is even a call back to what we were talking about in the beginning of this podcast where we have to stop putting these people on pedestals and i think keenan is such a likable guy um he's obviously like worshipped on reddit um and you know, he, he's taken a lot of important stances that a lot of people have been afraid to take. And so I think it's easy um, in terms of being a fan um, to put him on kind of a pedestal and be like, right. no, Keenan can do no wrong. Like he's done so many good things. He can't possibly mess up. Um, but I think it's fair to say that, you know, he's not perfect. Nobody is, um, especially, you know, as we've seen, this sport is a bit crazy um, and everybody's got their own drama. And um yeah, I, I'm sure there is some truth to, to what Gordon said. Right. Um, so I also don't think it I don't so, think it's fair okay. for, for people to, to say like um you know, oh Keenan's the bad guy here. Like have have you guys seen the, the subreddit like um no. Am I the asshole? No, is that oh, a good yeah, I, so, I don't I don't like, do Reddit. Well, I need like to get on Reddit. Pleasure. Yeah, it's Reddit, that sounds like Reddit a good subreddit. Time waster. <laughs> yeah, I need to get on Reddit. Yeah, I, I, so so yeah I I never got into that, but I'm gonna start doing it. Yeah, so people basically submit these stories about like stuff that's going on in their lives. Like, oh, I had an argument th- with this person. Am I the asshole? Right. And the the way people respond is, um, you're the asshole, um, not the asshole. Everyone sucks here. There are no uh, assholes here. I like or that. More info is needed. I like and that. So I like I think, that. I think it's a pretty healthy way to to look at um, to look at every dispute in life, including <laughs> this one. Just be like. There doesn't have to be, you know, Gordon or Keenan doesn't have to be like the winner here. Like it could be that right. everybody sucks in this situation or it could be just like, oh, there were misunderstandings and no one was really being a dick. Like they they just didn't really align with how they saw the situation. So, so you know, more specifics, that, more specifically in the actual uh, interview or the actual diet or the, the rant that Gordon released. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. He he talks about a few other things that Keenan has done throughout the course of their relationship to back up uh, some of the character flaws that Keenan has had, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to list them simply because it leads to an end that I want us to, to kind of talk about in the in the grand scheme of things. So Keenan basically like so Gordon talks about how Keenan left Autos and then he wanted to train for the ADCC and he didn't have any place to train because I guess LA was too too far north for him to go train with Salavera. So they invited him to come to the blue basement to come train at Danaher mm-hmm. school. And then Gordon goes on to say that, you know, Keenan was, you know, he didn't want to train hard. He kind of didn't have and these are things that I have noticed in a lot of his recent competitions that I've talked to about, you know, other people that, that, you know, other instructors, other guys, the jujitsu fans, you know, he looks, he looks kind of uh, flat in the last few matches I've seen. Like he just looks like he just doesn't, you know, and I get, he's opened his gym up. He's got other things going on, but he doesn't look like he's taking it very seriously. Not the Keenan of, of old and Gordon, you know, he, 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 he kind of called him out for that. He said, you know, when he was up here training, yeah, he was trying to implement a lot of the new things that, that he was learning from, from, from John and from everybody else. But, you know, he wasn't really there in it to win it like we had anticipated to have Keenan Cornelius come train with us. Now, he also mm-hmm. says that he went back and opened up his gym. And now he's, you know, in, in a in a in a in a in a, in a not so great manner and in an incomplete manner. He's trying to 
to to teach the techniques that Danaher has showed him. He learned from the Blue Basement and yeah. sell them through his, his his internet connections and stuff like that, which you know are pretty bad. Does it happen? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I I don't believe that anyone has any kind of like copyright information on anything in jujitsu. So I think it's kind of silly to say, "Well, I invented that. This is my technique. This is my my uh, my system." Because ah, that's just yeah. silly. Everybody's got a everybody. You know, systems are systems. We we come up with things. No one really invents anything in jujitsu. But it goes on to talk about in more depth uh, the ADCC where Keenan Cornelius dropped out of the ADCC because of that conjectivitis, which in my opinion, based upon what I know of the circumstances, because I think that a lot of that originated at Atos, and I'm pretty certain because I have friends of mine that train at Atos that have told me that like they were getting a conjectivitis and Keenan had it long before it became an outbreak. And I personally think that Keenan mm-hmm. might have been person zero or patient zero to bring it to New York. So when he dropped out, he was essentially saying, hey, man, like I dropped out. Gordon shouldn't be in this event. Uh, Gary shouldn't be in this event because they're spreading around the conjectivitis, which, you know, you were at the ADCC. You saw yeah, it. this rampant <laughs> freaking gross. disease that was flying through the freaking ADCC trials because who knows who was, who was contagious? Who knows who was catching this stuff? So I guess the point I'm trying to say is, is like, you know, Everybody's kind of a fall here, man. You know, like Gordon particularly is saying that, you know, Keenan tried to get him thrown out of the ADCC. He tried to get Mo to tell him he couldn't compete. He was causing a big stir saying that you have to quit this spread of conjectivitis. And my other friend was actually telling me that, like, people in the stands were actually catching it because it was that that contagious. Jesus. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess based upon that, you know, you, I don't I don't even know what the hell the point I'm making. I, I just feel like that uh, – I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? It's a good that? point to be. Well, no, I think the point to be made is exactly what um, we. It, it's like the overarching theme of this discussion today is, you know, these are still just people, and you cannot right. unhealthily idolize these people. Not Keenan, not these elite level, you know, Coral and Red Belts, um, not Gordon, not anybody. Like each of these people that we follow, and there's so many people that like I'm a big fan of, and I would be devastated if they, if it came out that they did something terrible or said something dumb. Um, but Mike, they, Mikey Musumeci robs like, a bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like stuff like that. I'm like yeah. that. That would be devastating, you know. And like there's there's so many you know big name athletes in the sport that I really really think the world of, and but I think any person if you give them enough time and opportunities and time in the spotlight and you give them a platform to speak like they're gonna say something dumb eventually i have you know like i'm sure i've written stuff that i look back on i'm like "Hmm," like this was kind of not the right thing to to say or to write um and i think that's just the perspective that everybody at home needs to to keep um because yeah, do that. Like you, you shouldn't have heroes in jujitsu. All it means is that they are really, really good at beating people up. Right, and they it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't any... necessarily mean have character. And again, to to kind of like reiterate what you said, I I feel like there's a cause and effect that's a negative causality of putting someone on the pedestal. Yeah, exactly. You you have this person mm-hmm. that you can deify, but on, it's it's very difficult to hold off those uh those those trojan horses or those you know those barbarians at the gate from from coming in and making you really believe those thoughts to come in and make you believe hey you know these guys all love me i can do whatever the hell i want to do you know i can i can i can break Mm -hmm. all the rules because i'm xyz and the public love me anyway so why do i have to play by the rules that's that's human nature and I think as humans, we need to, to, to do our best to try to, 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 to conquer that. I see uh, in, in your yeah. future, I see a very uh, intuitive uh, satire piece on the topic. I think you should come up with <laughs> I, love like you. I, I love your satire. I love your satire pieces, by the way. Your satire yeah. stuff is really fun. What are you, you read. Thank you. You're what are welcome. your thoughts, Kevin B? I think that this has been a long one. <laughs> I think normally, uh, normally it's old man Kev that's calling it, but I think it's going to be young man. Oh Kev wow, Kev, Jesus, that's calling dude, it. it. Yeah, I'm taking right. the reins on this one. Yeah, I would just say, good, in, in closing, in closing, I would just say that jujitsu is ultimately good. Uh, we're going to figure more things out the more information and the more time we have. 
But uh, this is already a really scary time for the world. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. in charge uh, at all levels, every which way, are, are kind of screwing things up. Except for some places. Like, I've heard Korea, I've heard South Korea is dealing with it pretty well. Yeah, but, Australia's uh, not doing bad. Like, we're flattening. Yeah. Well, I mean, once you get set on fire, I feel like you guys start to get yeah. to handle all, all, all this stuff really well. Yeah. Yeah. The whole continent was on fire. We're fine. There. You guys still, yeah. you guys still recover from that? That wasn't that long ago. Yeah, I know. It's still... I, yeah, I, I, I don't really know. I haven't been able to travel to those areas because we've been insane. stuck inside. But Jeez. yeah, um, the country will recover. Well, cool, man. Yeah. Let's um, um yeah, let's call it. I just wanted I to say, say one more. Yeah. Yes. One yeah. Sure. Every closing, closing, closing words, words boss. Anything you want to say? Yeah. So yeah. So guys, as we've talked about, you know, um. The, the heavy discussion that we had before about, you know, um, predatory behavior in jujitsu. We've talked about how some of our jujitsu idols are, you know, flawed. Um, and I think the best way that we can all collectively fix this problem and make, we have to, we have to be the ones to make the sport what we want it to be. And not just we, as in, you know, the three writers in this podcast, but also the gym owners, the, the fans, um, the, everyday students, the, you know, the beginners, the advanced practitioners, we all have to be that change. If you see somebody being promoted and you don't think that promoted in, in terms of like media promotion or, you know, a promoter having that person on their show and you think they shouldn't be like that, like you need to make your voice heard. It cannot just be us media people saying stuff. You have, hey coach, I don't want this person to, I don't want you to host this person for a seminar because they've done X, Y, Z. Whether or not your coach listens to you, like that's on them. But you need to do your part, even if it's just speaking up a little bit. And um, again, re regardless of what the outcome with the Claudia situation is, you know, she had such courage to come out and speak. And if she can come out about what was a traumatic experience for her, um, you know, against somebody who is one of the biggest names in jujitsu, um, then we all kind of owe it to the community as well to speak up when we see predatory behavior going on when we see undesirable behavior from jujitsu practitioners of any level from a white belt who's just being creepy with the girls in class to the highest level of black belt you know who's saying unsavory things or doing unsavory things it's everybody's responsibility you cannot pass this off to other people that's all i got to say about well, that normally my compulsive narcissism would make me have to have the last word but i think you said that uh, perfectly avery so i don't even want to carry on with that guy <laughs> if, right. if we have to be that we have to be the change we want is all i'm going to say with that exactly okay well exactly. uh heavy though this episode was i hope we were able to bring you our standard brevity and laughs if only for a little bit uh thank you for joining us and thank no you. matter where you are and uh, thank you, obviously, thank you, our lovely boss and uh, leader. I love, uh, I love talking to you so much, Avery. I feel so bad when I send you messages. I always feel like I'm bothering you, but I can't help myself. It's, no, I, you never I, are. I'm just I really, oh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin really you know, uh, Kevin, you. why aren't you this nice to me? Gosh, you, you don't even love me anymore. <laughs> we just, we just, we just, <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't want to go there. I'll be <laughs> Avery, All right. Thank you very much for your so, time. This has been yet another episode of the Jiu-Jitsu Times podcast. I have been your host, Kevin Bradley, as always joined by my co-host, Kevin Gallagher, and now uh, my boss, Avery Clemens. Thank you very much. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you next time. Boom. There we go. See you guys.